Welcome to Smacky's Garage, where today we're gonna to talk about some interesting and maybe some surprising information about classic Mustangs. We're gonna cover a few fun facts about this 1969 Mustang behind me. If you're like me, you probably didn't buy the car new and you're not the first owner. What that means is you probably didn't get some of the original selling material that came with the car. What I wanted to do today is walk through some of the car's most interesting marketing material and we can walk through it together. There's a, a few fun facts, maybe a few things you wouldn't expect. So let's go ahead and let's talk through it. Let's keep in mind kind of this is an older car, so you're not gonna see the same features that you'd see on a new vehicle, but keep it in your mind, kind of the comparison about the last car you bought, which was probably in the 2000s, to this vehicle from the 60s. Now, one of the first bits of information that you probably didn't know, which is significantly different than today, is there's actually six different V8 engines offered for this vehicle. In a time today, we're looking at gas vehicles going away. Back in the 1960s, they had six different options of what you could put in this engine bay for a V8. And that's not even including what they had options for V6s. Now of those six options, you had a 302 two barrel, which was 220 horsepower. You had a 351 two barrel, which was 250 horsepower a 351 four barrel carburetor, which was 290 horsepower. You have a 394 barrel, which was 320 horsepower. Then you had a 428 four barrel, which was 335 horsepower. And then you had a 428 Cobra jet that had the Ram air on it. And that was also 335 horsepower. So it was interesting that those two engines were rated the same. Now, the next interesting bit of information on these vehicles is it actually came with a rim blow steering wheel. And what that is, it means the horn isn't in the center like a typical horn would be. It's actually on the inside of the ring all the way around. So no matter where you squeeze on it, so no matter where you squeeze on it, you're gonna have the horn go off. You can squeeze up here, down here, I think the, it's interesting when you're, when you get used to it, if you're not used to it and you're just driving the car, you actually end up squeezing this a little bit too hard going around the corner and beeping at people. Now the next bit of information on this vehicle is about safety. One of the things that I ask you to keep in mind is back in the sixties, there was a lot more accident, car accidents that resulted in deaths than there are today. A lot of the safety standards have changed. So while we start looking at kind of what was deterrent, what was deemed as safety back then, kind of keep in mind, cars were just getting seatbelts. They were, that's kind of the time when this vehicle was built. While I go through some of the safety information, when I talk through safety design code hooks, let me know down in the comments if you know exactly what they're talking about. I find it interesting just seeing it inside the, um, in the marketing materials. So let me know down in the comments if you know exactly what they're talking about. So in the marketing materials, one of the things called out was safety design code hooks. What that actually means, I don't know. I use them to hold the seat belts in place when I'm not driving and when I just have it kind of sitting around. Next is the safety design radio knobs. Not exactly sure where they were going with it. It's interesting, maybe they don't fly off, kind of like some other vehicles may have. You had safety design window regulator knobs. So this, which goes up and down, not exactly sure what they meant by that, but kind of in the marketing materials, they were called out as safety designed window regulator knobs. Then you had an energy absorbing steering column. Do know about this one. Some of these steering columns, if they're uh, just a long steel shaft, if you get in an accident and the front end crumples in, you know, it's gonna push that steering shaft and the steering wheel into you. On these, there was actually a plastic pin in the center, which is designed to, kind of, as the car, if it gets in an accident, will actually cause the two pieces of the shaft to break and collapse in on each other to hopefully not hurt you. It was a good innovation at the time. Then there was the energy absorbing armrests and the safety designed door handles. Now, I don't know which armrests they're talking about, I'm assuming these, but you can see that they're padded and the door handles are inside, so there's no way that you're gonna get impaled, injured by them in a crash. Now, one of the other interesting bits of information, you know, you can see I don't have my safety designed radio knobs on this right now, um, 
was this stereo was actually, they call out in the marketing material that it sounds exactly like you're in an orchestra pit. Now for the speaker, there's a single speaker up here on this car. You know, some of the cars had speakers that were down in the doors there, but I haven't hooked it up, but I don't think it sounds like any orchestra pit that I've heard today. Probably for the time it was there, but definitely not anymore. Now, one of my favorite things in this vehicle is how they did store storage for the seat belts. You can see that some of the seat belts are stored here in the center. So they would actually just slide into place. And then you would have a seat belt up top there, kind of wrapped around the energy absorbing coat hook there. And then you would have it Velcroed up on the top. Now this is one of the more interesting features that I find on the car that it's, I really like because it keeps it out of the way. Back in the 60s, these weren't retractable, especially on this car. So having them be able to be held up top is a really nice feature. Now, one of the other features that I liked is the turn signal hood. So you can't really see it right now, but when I turn on the emergency flashers, you can see the turn signals in the hood scoop. Not only are they here in the dash, But you have them up here, which it's really nice that you don't have to look down at the dash to see if your turn signal is still on or if it's off. So I really like these up here. You have the hazards on right now, but they also work for the turn signals. We can see the vent down here that I've taken the cover off so you can see how the vent works. So if you pull on this, you see the vent opens and lets air in from the outside. If you shut it, then it's closed and the air from the outside doesn't come in. Now I'm typically using these vents more in the fall time when it's cooled off or even at night because with where they come in underneath the front fender if the road is really hot or if you're sitting idle for a little bit you're going to get a lot of heat from the road and there's a chance that some of the engine heat will get into there. Not likely but you know I typically don't run them open unless where it's really cool outside and nice outside. Now one of the last interesting features that you could get on this car was actually trailer towing. So if you wanted to, you could get a 69 Mustang, 69 Mach 1, you could get a Boss 429 with the trailer towing package, which would actually allow you to tow things with your car. I haven't personally seen someone ever tow with one of these, but I've seen some pictures floating around on the internet of people with a tow ball on the back and they're towing with the vehicle. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in on Smacky's Garage as we walk through the features on this 1969 Mustang. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next week.